Oh my god, hey! And hello, gorgeous. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Welcome back to my stage YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theater. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about some theater news from the other side of the Atlantic, where the highly anticipated Broadway revival of Funny Girl has just opened and its parade has been well and truly rained on by the New York theatre critics. This revival is the first time that the show has been seen on Broadway since the original 1960s production, which catapulted its then star Barbara Streisand to megastardom after she starred in the Broadway show and then the subsequent film adaptation and the sequel to the film adaptation. That gives you some sort of suggestion as to how successful this property was with her attached to it and how synonymous she has become with Funny Girl as a concept. In the intervening years, it has been revived regionally in the US, but we have never seen a full Broadway revival. That is not to say that producers haven't tried. There have in fact been many attempts at Broadway revivals. Some of them even got to the stage of fully casting a production that was then subsequently pulled. The reasons these productions have never actually seen the lights of Broadway have always been historically dubious, but let's say Barbara works in mysterious ways. And over the years, a slew of terrific Broadway actresses have been touted to be potentially cast as Fanny Bryce. And this has ranged from fan casting and homosexual pipe dreams to actual casting announcements. Lauren Ambrose, who starred in the most recent Broadway revival of My Fair Lady as Eliza Doolittle, was set to play Fanny Bryce in the previous cancelled Broadway revival. Leslie Kritzer was also up for that part, having played the role regionally before at the Paper Mill Playhouse. Generally, anytime a quirky comedic actress with a great voice appears on Broadway, people instantly say, funny girl. It happened when Jesse Mueller appeared on the scene after her star turn in On A Clear Day You Can See Forever. It happened when Nina Ariando won the Tony Award for Venus and Fur and she didn't even sing in that. There's been talk of Adina, there's been talk of Lady Gaga, there's been talk of Leah Michelle extensively. Twitter loves to talk about Leah Michelle and I love to read it. So after years of speculation of all of these huge diva vocalists stepping into Barbara Streisand's iconic high belting shoes, it came slightly out of left field when Beanie Feldstein was announced to be starring finally in the Broadway return of Funny Girl. Feldstein's casting is not dissimilar to Sheridan Smith's in The West End, where it's more of a focus on a fantastic actress who has a great voice, but is very much not going to give you a Barbara Streisand impression. She is quite discernibly a different fit in the role. The only difference between the two is that Beanie Feldstein is also Jewish and able to give an authentic performance as a Jewish comedian, whose cultural heritage is referenced very specifically at multiple points throughout the show. So Feldstein had a lot of love behind her going into this Broadway opening night. She was a scene stealer when she played Minnie Faye in the recent Broadway revival of Hello Dolly. She's done some really great work in recent films. She is currently filming, I say currently, on and off filming the 10 year long film production of Merrily We Roll Along. I don't have time today to talk about that one. So this casting announcement was met generally with a lot of enthusiasm and there has been a lot of desire for her to be really well received in this role. And yet. When the reviews came out earlier this week, it sent shockwaves throughout the theatre community at just how brutal some of them were. And I'm going to read you some excerpts from some of the reviews now. We're going to do a whole roundup. So you've really got to read these to get a fuller picture of what the response was because Broadway critics do not generally give star ratings. Some of the international papers, like The Guardian, like Time Out, have given star ratings as part of their reviews. They have not been favorable. So the New York Times said, Feldstein is not stupendous. She's good, she's funny enough in places, and immensely likable always, which is one of the kinder reviews that she had. You root for her to raise the roof, but she only bumps against it a little. Her voice, though solid and sweet and clear, is not well suited to the music. And it's difficult, because when the critics are saying here her voice is not well suited to the the music, what they're really saying without necessarily realizing it is her voice is not well suited to our understanding of how we expect the music to be sung based on Barbara Streisand's performance. It's just too inseparable for us to really think of those songs being sung any other way. You don't think Fanny Bryce when you hear Don't Rain On My Parade or People, you think Barbara Streisand. Helen Shaw for Vulture wrote, some of Feldstein's assets do make the trip over from film. She's winningly fresh, she gives great bumble, she has beautiful eyes the size of hubcaps which roll and twinkle and flirt, which is a bizarre Frankenstein-esque line to put in a review as far as I'm concerned, but I think there's a compliment in there somewhere. It's just a little bit vehicular. But in song after song, Feldstein's voice lets her down, piercing and unpleasant when it gets any higher than her chest, fading and pitchy when it descends even a few steps, it's simply not a sound you expect to hear on Broadway. And again, this is a really brutal takedown of her vocal suitability for the role. 
David Rooney for The Hollywood Reporter writes, The show feels patchy and episodic, and it needs a knockout, roof-raising lead to paper over the cracks. Feldstein gives a spirited, highly enjoyable performance, and her freshness drew squeals of appreciation from what seemed like a large contingent of very vocal young female fans on a recent press night. I take issue with any time a critic ever presumes to judge where the applause or the laughter is coming from. I think it's incredibly presumptuous and self-absorbed for anyone to be sitting in a theatre so consumed with their own opinion that when you hear enjoyment happening in that same room, you convince yourself it must be a young fan of that person who is already invested in their success. He goes on to say, she never quite makes the material soar, and this is a rickety vehicle that needs a supernova to put gas in its tank. And this is a really important point about the quality of this show outside of its leading performance. You know, where you have star vehicles, they fall into one of two categories. Shows that can stand up for themselves, something like Gypsy that has a very strong score and book and other great supporting roles, aside from Mama Rose, even though it is ostensibly a star vehicle originally written for Ethel Merman, and shows like Funny Girl, where if you strip away Fanny Bryce's excellent songs, you are left with questionable material. Mark Kennedy for the Associated Press is slightly kinder. He says, the show rests and falls on Feldstein, who must possess as Bryce both a grand confidence and an insecurity. Bryce is a beacon for all the misfits, a stand-in for the unconventional, a bagel on a plate full of onion rolls, and Feldstein nails it. Plus, she can deliver a fakachta with authenticity. Spoiler alert, I can't. Frank Rizzo for Variety can't help himself when he writes, the problem with this uninspired revival of Funny Girl is not simply the singular ghost of she who shall not be named, all right, it's Barbara Streisand. Rather, the issue here is the production's inability to live up to its star-making potential that would have made us once again forgive the simplistic, sentimental, and sanitized original book credited to Isabel Lennart. And honestly, I don't know if this was ever going to happen. I feel like Feldstein was always fighting a losing battle here as soon as she was cast to give a different interpretation of the role. The fact that, again, it's Michael Mayer, the same director who cast Sheridan Smith in the London production, is quite telling. His vision for Fanny Bryce is quite divorced from the expectation of the critics. And so while this one particular critic thinks that there was star-making potential and there was the chance for a star to be born again on Broadway, I think that was only ever going to happen if they agreed to play by their rules. Robert Hoffler for The Rap writes that Feldstein respects the 1964 score and doesn't modernise it with a lot of melismatic distortions. I can already tell you I don't like this man. Do you know which vocalist has done an awful lot for popularising melismatic distortions over the years? It's Barbara Streisand. Plot twist. Spoiler alert. Now you know. Keenly, he writes, Feldstein is a quirky offbeat choice to play Fanny Bryce, but then Streisand was also a quirky offbeat choice back in 1964. Carol Burnett and Anne Bancroft were the more conventional choices back then, and Bryce's daughter, Fran Arnstein Stark, wanted to see Mary Martin cast in the title role. Mary Martin, who originated roles on Broadway in South Pacific and The Sound of Music. The fact that it went to Barbara Streisand is another thing that has contributed to kind of the mythos around this star-making show, about it launching her career, and the fact that it's associated singularly with her is why she's all the more inescapable. Because it's also the only stage property that she's really that heavily associated with. Someone like Ethel Merman, who appeared in a number of star vehicles. She was Reno Sweeney in Anything Goes. She was Mama Rose in Gypsy. She was in Call Me Madam. You know, she, she did her shows. The variety of the roles she played made it easier for audiences to think of her as Ethel Merman appearing in these shows. And no one role is sort of more readily associated with her than the others. And subsequently those roles have been able to be reinterpreted by different performers with a lot of success. It also doesn't hurt that Ethel Merman loves nothing more than to sing very loudly and act as little as possible. But there are a whole host of shows on Broadway that haven't seen major revivals because they are considered too heavily linked to their original performers. A show like Mame with Angela Lansbury. She played the role originally, she was hugely acclaimed, she was beloved in this role. When it came back to Broadway, it was with her. And we've never seen a Broadway revival of this show. It's been performed regionally by a bunch of great actresses, the likes of Christine Baranski and Andrea McArdle. It's been performed in the UK, but we haven't seen a big splashy Broadway revival. And for a show this well loved, that's quite conspicuous. My feelings about this are because it's only really been associated with Angela on Broadway. Broadway. Even when the film adaptation was made, Mame was recast as Lucille Ball, and from what I remember it was not well received. A similar thing happened with the film version of Sweet Charity. Gwen Verdon's performance in this show originally was paramount to its success. She was beloved by the Broadway community in this role. She was recast with Shirley MacLaine, and the film was panned largely as a result of her absence from it. And there are other shows we haven't seen on Broadway since their original productions. Shows like The Boy From Oz with Hugh Jackman. Shows like Victor Victoria with Julie Andrews. 
will we ever see these re-attempted, or are they only ever going to be performed regionally or in the UK? Adam Feldman for Time Out writes, The rain clouds gather early over the misplaced pride parade that is the Broadway revival of Funny Girl. He goes on, like Edgar Allan Poe, to describe the opening night, and says that when Beanie Feldstein makes her first appearance as Ziegfeld Follies comedian Fanny Bryce, stares into an invisible mirror and delivers her famous opening self-affirmation, Hello Gorgeous, the crowd goes wild. Hilariously, the social media account for Funny Girl on Broadway has simply used his pull quote, the crowd goes wild. Which, you know, he said those words, and this is why you have to be very careful as a critic. Matt Windman for AMNY, and I have no idea what that is, that's just letters. Is that a chemical compound? What is that? He writes that, truth be told, Funny Girl is a star vehicle that is not much more than the leading role, as demonstrated by its weak and melodramatic book, and the inferior quality of literally every song that is not sung by Fanny. Which is what I've thought for a long time, and what we've already said about about, you know, a star vehicle that doesn't stand up without its central performance, where that is really the only great material in the show. He goes on to say some less kind things, where he writes that Feldstein is strained and nasal and unable to handle power solos like I'm the greatest star, people don't rain on my parade, and the music that makes me dance. I mean, there is a lot of singing in this show. She also overplays the comedy and resorts to mugging. I question how Feldstein could even be cast as Fanny in a high school or theatre camp production, which is quite brutal for a star of her caliber. You know, that feels like an unkind thing to add onto the end of that section. And it feels like more of a comment on her casting type rather than her ability in this role. Either that or he's just seen some really good high school and theater camp productions. Johnny Oleksinski for the New York Post writes that the mediocrity that salivating Fanny Bryce fans are finally laying their eyes on isn't particularly funny or well sung or well designed or well directed. And I would place more faith in those comments if I didn't intrinsically disagree with the beginning of that sentence because I don't think the audience was particularly filled with salivating Fanny Bryce fans. I think it was filled with salivating Barbara Streisand fans, and there's a very big difference. David Cote and Rex Reed for The Observer both write about Ramin Karimloo's performance as Nikki Arnstein. David Cote says that he is suavely solid, while Rex Reed gives him an entire love letter of a section. He writes, The dashing, glamorous Ramin Karimloo, so wonderful in Anastasia, is also the first Nick who can sing, dance, and render an audience stricken with such awe that new numbers had to be added to enhance his role and showcase his varied talents appropriately. If this isn't a star in the making, then justice no longer exists in the American theatre. I do take issue with describing someone as a star in the making when they've already opened the Broadway revival of Les Mis as Jean Valjean and originated roles in new musicals like Anastasia on Broadway and played the Phantom of the Opera for the 25th anniversary gala that was filmed and released on DVD that everyone has seen on both sides of the Atlantic and played the role of the Phantom in Love Never Dies, the hugely anticipated sequel. Like, Ramin Karimlu has had an entire successful career at this point for you to be calling him a star in the making. Like, he's made. The man is made. His colleague from The Observer, David Cote, also writes that Feldstein comes across as too sensible, too sane, too body positive, and I have no idea what on earth that is meant to mean. I can think of no references to body positivity in either the script or score of Funny Girl, and I can only assume this is some kind of a reference to Beanie Feldstein's physical appearance, which I think has no place in a review whatsoever. Now, the reactions from critics here have reignited this dialogue about criticism and its necessity, and, you know, whether it's fair, whether it's helpful. And as someone who spends an awful lot of time talking about their opinion, on theatre, you know, whether I'm reviewing for YouTube or my own blog or for different publications, you will not be surprised to learn I have an awful lot to say about this. And while I think it can be tempting and maybe even sometimes a little bit fun to find these clever, jokey, nasty headlines, there have been references to Funny Girl taking a spill, referencing the lyric from Don't Rain On My Parade, calm down, it means something completely different in America. While it's fun to come up with those kind of lines, it is not necessarily the most constructive thing. Theatre criticism ought to be more generally constructive. Constructive. Like, what is the purpose here? Does the theatre critic exist purely to condemn and tear down and feel like some sort of David taking on this giant Goliath of a multi-million dollar revival on Broadway? Is the critic the person standing in between hugely inflated ticket prices and the audiences saying, no, get back, this is not worth your hard-earned money? Or is the critic the person who is supposed to help unite audience members with a show that they will fall in love with and help promote and uplift 
and encourage new work, especially in a very trying time for theatre. The latter of those two things is something that I definitely just, it just feeds my soul a lot more. Being able to connect audience members with theatre that they end up loving and wouldn't have otherwise known about is my favourite thing that I have ever done with my platform. And I can tell you that being the voice of condemnation and criticism is not nearly as fun. But I am curious to hear what all of you think. Let me know in the comments section what you think about these reviews for the Broadway revival of Funny Girl. And also let me know your thoughts. If you're someone who has seen Beanie Feldstein and the Broadway revival of Funny Girl, please let us know what you thought down in the comments. Section. If you've seen a previous production of the show, if you saw it with Sheridan Smith or Natasha Barnes in London perhaps, or on tour in the UK, let me know what you thought about those as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel for plenty more Stagey content about all your favourite shows coming very soon. Also, if you want to support me as a Stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where for a variety of membership prices, you can gain access to all sorts of exclusive photo and video content, including early releases and Patreon exclusive videos. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>